Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new 2021 and a half Salem Cruise Light 19DB XL bunkhouse travel trailer. We're going to take a minute, walk you through the inside and the outside of the RV. We'll be right back on the inside. All right guys, we're now up inside the new Salem Cruise Light here, the 19DB. We're gonna spin through the inside here and then we'll head outside. Now, the Salem Cruise Light is the big brother to the Wildwood X Light brand. You'll see same model number 19DB XL in that line as well. They're built on the same factory assembly line, run down the same thing again with the same people putting it together. And they basically have all the same floor plans, same options, just a little bit different coloration of the RV. So depending on what colors you like, you may want one or the other. We're gonna start here in the kitchen area real quick. You have the flip up little counter on the side there to give you a little more counter space. Down below that is your propane leak detector. You have a little bit of storage space below the sink area along with two full extending ball bearing drawer gutted drawers and your furnace exhausts out right below that as well. You do have the high-rise faucet. You have the little strainer cover there, and then you have a double bowl sink. Window back in behind there does open. You have the oven over here on the left with the three burner stovetop. Also, the cover kind of flipped up there, comes down and covers it up, giving you again some more counter space if you're not using that. But it kind of acts as a backsplash when it's up as well. Just above that, you have your hood range with your light and fan and your traditional 120 volt electric microwave there. And some storage up above the sink area as well. That shelf in there could be removable if you wanted to take it out for taller items. Now hanging on those doors, there's a couple little advertisements. One about the roadside assistance that Forest River provides. Uh, well, Forest River has a company called Safe Ride that actually provides it, but that comes with the RV for the first year of ownership from the date of purchase. So that's kind of a nice little bonus feature that comes with it. Also, the unit is pre-wired for the King Wi-Fi Connect system, which basically would require you to add a piece to the roof of the RV, but it is pre-wired for that if you wanted to add that. Now, over here on this side of the RV, you can see you have some cabinets up here, some storage space. Now, inside here will pop up a picture. You can see where your TV connections are up in there, along with the pre-wire for that King Wi-Fi system, if you wanted to add that aftermarket. To the left of the cabinet there is your Furion radio. Now, on the left side of the cabinet is also a little control panel. has your monitor panel for your tanks and stuff there water pump switch, water heater on gas switch, some light switches, and your awning in and out switch as well. All vinyl floor throughout the RV. The little booth dinette area here has some storage under both seats, and they have the little pull-out tubs as well. But they're basically doors on the ends of the seats there that open up for you. Now this will actually go down and make it to a bed also if you had an extra guest that needed to come with you. Big window there overlooking your campsite area underneath your awning and that window does open. Coleman air conditioner that they're currently using in the RV. Now over here is your refrigerator. This is a 12 volt refrigerator roughly 11 cubic feet. So it's one of the biggest refrigerators offered in a trailer this size, uh, but a nice feature again, it is 12 volt powered. So if you are a boondock camper and you do the solar panel system, like a portable solar panel, plug it in outside, 
Um, you know, that will help regenerate power for your battery. Again, working this refrigerator. When you're driving down the road, if your truck or SUV is wired properly, it will also have a 12 volt feed wire that is again, recharging the battery system while you're driving down the road to again, help work the lights and the refrigerator and all that type of stuff. Now down below that is your electric box down there with your breakers and fuses. You have two double bunks. Now there is some storage down below there. Again, double bunks, and each bunk area does have USB charger ports on the walls there. Over here on the right, you have your medicine cabinet there, little sink area, and some storage down below. Now back in behind here, we'll pop up a few pictures of this as well. This is kind of uh, tight for the camera, but you have your foot flush toilet back here. You also have your walk-in shower back here. And this shower has the ABS tub surround to kind of protect the wall. And it also has a heavy duty, I would say it looks like a vinyl material shower curtain that rolls across there. And that is attached at the bottom along with being attached at this top bar that kind of arches out. Um, so it's a lot less likely to have a leaking problem versus just kind of a free hanging curtain. There's also a vent in there as well. Spin on back around here, looking forward. There are TV hookups. Again, you've seen the TV uh, hookups inside the cabinet there, but right here on the side of the cabinet is where you would mount that TV if you wanted to put a TV in it. Now looking ahead here, you have your sofa. This unit is a Murphy bed style unit. So the sofa will flip down and then the bed comes down as well. So you have your camper queen bed there. That bed has a latch on each side holding it up right now. There's also another fancier latch that holds it down when you flip it down. So when you wanna flip it up, you have to unlatch it as well so that it can go up. Now that sofa there could also be kind of raised up a little bit to get to the storage compartment area if you had something right there you wanted to grab. Um, so you could reach under there and get something. Now there's hanging closet and storage and nightstands on both sides of the bed. So you can again get to that storage underneath from outside or get to it from in here. You have USB charger ports on each side. And then inside the cabinet, the hanging closet, I guess you'd say, um, there is also an electric outlet on each side. And you obviously seen the little cubby holes there in the side of those cabinets where you could reach in and set things or plug things in and feed it on through there if you wanted. A couple speakers inside the RV. You'll also see a couple speakers outside the RV when we get back out there. But overall, pretty cool little lightweight unit. I mean, this thing comes in around 4,200 pounds roughly. So a lot of SUVs and stuff could haul this down the road. Um, you know, great for quick family trips, not real super expensive. Uh, pricing and stuff, guys, is usually found in the description of the uh, RV down below. So if you do want to check that out, you know, remember to click down there if one of these things does interest you by chance. So we're going to head outside. I want to show you around the outside of the RV. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the new Cruise Light 19 DB model here. We're going to start here on the door side and kind of work our way around the RV. So first things up, you can see we have an awning on the RV. This is a power awning. It does have the LED light strip up there close to the RV's body. The arms are adjustable and tiltable for water runoff purposes. There's also a manual override in case of an electronic failure. There's a little rubber plug in this top headpiece here. Remove that plug and you can crank it in and out with a ratchet and socket if needed. Hopefully you never need it, but it is nice that it has a manual override because some brands don't. 
Large pass-through storage compartment here going across the front of the RV. The baggage door has a lock and a thumb latch along with a magnetic holder on it. In the front corner here, you can see where it's pre-wired for a Furion portable solar panel on the side here. Next to that is a power jack button for the front jacks. The power jacks are an option. Normally it comes standard with heavy duty scissor jacks and they are manual. So you do have the option to upgrade to power stabilizers on the unit if you wanted to. You can also see a nice roll to the front of it. The thing is sloped back very nicely and that basically just makes it a little more aerodynamic driving down the road versus a traditional flat front RV like some brands are still doing. Traditional RV entry door, basically a little uh, lock on it with a deadbolt and a handle lock. Key entry, not keyless style. It has no window in the entry door, just a solid fiberglass door. Has a traditional screen door on it. The unit has the more ride steps. So you have two steps going into the RV here and they have the adjustable feet. The steps rated for up to 500 pounds where a traditional hover style step is only rated for 300 pounds. But the step basically flips up inside the doorway when you're traveling and then you bring it out as you need. Next to the entry door there on the left is where you will find your model number, again, 19 DB XL model. The DB really stands for the double bed, double bunk kind of scenario. The XL doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, some dealers use it in advertisements, some don't, but they're all the same, whether it's advertised as a 19 DB or a 19 DB XL. Two speakers up top here, which are basically lit up blue there. It has a little accent lighting in them. Double axle unit, and it has drum brakes, four wheel brakes. Just above the back tire here is an electric outlet. And just above that to the left a little bit is a cable outlet. So if you wanted to plug a TV in out here, you could do so. Now again, this one was ordered with the power stabilizer jack. So you have rear stabilizer jacks here on the back. The power button is right there to the right of that storage door, just behind the uh, fender skirt there. The unit has a small outdoor kitchen area here. So you have the mini fridge, which does have a little freezer up there as well. And then you have the Suburban Griddle, which you're starting to find this on a lot of Forest River campers nowadays. These little Suburban Griddles. It's basically a propane griddle. Slides back in out of the way. And then there's a little bit of storage and a little shelf area right there. Now the little black hose is basically a cold water spray port hose that you'll see on the back right here next to the tail light. So you could plug that in there and basically have cold water back here so if you're out here cooking and create a mess or a fire or whatever, you do have a little uh, spray area back here. Traditional four inch square tube bumper on the rear of the RV. You can obviously see the spare tire there mounted to that with a nice little cover over top of it. Six gallon gas water heater is on the rear of the coach here. That's that black square that you see there. In the middle lower section, you have the inch and a 16th drain plug socket to drain it out. And up top, you have your pressure relief valve there to relieve the pressure. So before you drain it, make sure you relieve the pressure so it don't shoot hot water all over you. In between the water heater and that taillight, again, you have that spray port. Just to the left of that spray port is the black tank flush. So when you do leave the campground or if you happen to have dumping at the campsite, when you're dumping the toilet system out, you can hook up a hose there and rinse that out. That basically, that one outlet right there goes straight into the toilet tank and floods it out. So if you do hook something onto that, make sure you open your black valve. Because if you turn that on and you don't open that valve and you forget about it, it will flood back up through the toilet into your camper and you'll have a real mess on your hands. So be real careful on that. Up top there in the center below that middle uh, running light is pre-wire for an observation camera. So that is something you can add to the unit if you want to. 
Now up top, you're gonna see the roof picture here pop up. Up on the roof, you do have some little things like plumbing stack vents, roof vent up there, TV antenna up in front of the air conditioner, uh, obviously your big air conditioner up there as well. Uh, so there's a few things that come up through the roof. You do wanna make sure you maintain those seals and seams. Uh, basically all these RVs have plumbing stack vents and roof vents, roof mount air conditioners, um, you know, TV antennas, a lot of things that they put on the roof of an RV. And whether it's a fiberglass roof, a PVC roof, TPO, you know, rubber, whatever, they're all gonna have to have those seals maintained. So it's real important to get up there from time to time and inspect those seals to make sure that they don't crack open. Normally for the first year or two, you don't really have to worry about it a whole lot, but I still recommend you check it. But usually you don't have to actually do anything. But as these things travel down the road, there's a lot of flexing. Uh, they sit outside, so they're in cold weather, hot weather, so some shrinkage, contracting, you know, all that expansion, all that type of stuff. Um, so it's a good idea to check that. You never want to leave something cracked open. Water can get down in there, damage your RV, and then you're out thousands of dollars in repairs or possibly totaling out a camper if you don't catch it in time. So real important, guys, check your seams, check your seals. You know, things around your tail lights, your running lights, your stove exhaust vents, you know, all those type of things will have like some silicone on it or some Dicor sealer on the roof areas that you got to want to keep up with. Now back here in the lower corner, you have your gray and black tank dump. So your waste tanks dump out of this one area down here. Just above that, you have your low point water drains for your hot and cold water. Just above that on the side is the cable slash satellite inlet. Power cord pulls out of this hole here. This is probably about a 25, maybe 30 foot cord, roughly somewhere in that range. Just above the front tire here, you have your gravity fill freshwater tank inlet. So you just basically stick a hose down in there that fills the tank. Again, you want to make sure you keep an eye on it. You can check it on that monitor panel in there so that you don't overfill it. Um, to the left of that is your city water inlet. And with the city water inlet, if you have hook up at your campsite, basically hook your hose to their faucet, hook it to the side of the camper. It's best to have a water pressure regulator if you have one. Um, but basically that will feed water directly in and you automatically have water. But if you're using that fresh water tank, you gotta make sure you turn on your 12 volt water pump, on demand pump that they have in the RV so that it'll pump it out of the tank into the RV. Now just above that window right there is your stove exhaust vent to exhaust out the smoke and smells, moisture, things like that when you're in there cooking. Now down below you'll see pop up here the freshwater tank drain inch and a half dump valve. It's basically the same size as that gray tank dump valve in the back. So it'll dump out pretty quickly for you. A lot of brands just have a little uh, half inch or three eighths inch line drain. So it takes a long time to drain out, but this will definitely drain out a lot quicker for you. And then that little uh, silver area right there, that little rectangle is your furnace exhaust. You do have gutters running down both sides of the RV to kind of help keep it clean and shoot away as much water as possible. The other side of the baggage area here for your storage, again, magnetic holder holding that up. Now on the front corner here, you have your stickers that are important informational stickers here. You have the first sticker that's gonna pop up is gonna be your data sticker for production date, has the VIN number on it, axle sizes, uh, and your gross vehicle weight. This is what we usually refer to as the gross vehicle weight sticker. That's the most you can load the RV up to before you risk really breaking you know, axles, frames, uh, hitch weight, all that type of stuff kind of combined. Uh, again, remember that not all the weight sits on the axles. That tongue up here, this hitch jack, is holding you know, a few hundred pounds, depending on how you know, big the camper is but it's holding weight here. When you hook it to the ball of your truck, it's holding weight there. So not all the weight sits on the axles. If you cut that jack off, the thing basically just falls on its face because it's not 
perfectly balanced like you would a, a car or a truck where it's got wheels on all four corners. So a little bit different in determining the weights factors of RVs. Now, next sticker is gonna pop up is gonna be your unloaded vehicle weight. Important, this is what it rolled off the factory assembly line weighing. Now these always differ a little bit from, you know, unit to unit, even though it might be the same model. When it rolled across the assembly line, one may have had some water in it. You know, some guy may have left a cordless drill in there that weighed a couple pounds or something. So they always, you know, roll off a little bit differently when they hit that last part of the assembly line. And then they get pushed off into the area where the factory checks things out. Um, next sticker is going to be your uh, tire sticker, which is again another important sticker there. It has your tire size on it and also your tire pressure. Very important guys, check your tire pressure before each trip. Um, tires are only rated to hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. And if you let that pressure drop too low, it can't hold the weight of the RV properly and they tend to blow out fairly easy. So check your tire pressure, very, very important. Also, you know, not a bad idea to check your lug nuts from time to time. RV tires and torquing side flex things go through a lot more than what a car tums, uh, tends to do. So sometimes the lug nuts on RVs can actually work loose as well. So definitely check your lug nuts from time to time too, guys. Now up front here, you do have a lower diamond plate metal across the front section here. You have two 20 pound propane tanks with the changeover regulator there. And it does have the hard bottle cover that you see on the ground down there. Heavy duty safety chains, seven way Bargman lighting plug, which also works, feeds power to the brake system. Uh, again, make sure you have a brake controller in your tow vehicle so you can work the brakes on the RV properly. Without a brake controller, the brakes will not work on the RV. The power tongue jack on the front with a light and manual override in case of an electronic failure. There is a battery disconnect back in behind here with the little red key to turn it on and off. Um, if you're storing the RV for longer than maybe a couple days, it's probably a good idea just to shut it off so you don't lose power. Back in behind these tanks, room for a battery to go. Uh, the unit comes with zero batteries from the RV manufacturer. It will come with one deep cycle interstate battery and box from Couches RV Nation if you purchase from them. I do recommend you buy from them. They're one of the cheapest dealers in the country. They're gonna save you a lot of money. Um, but if you don't buy from them, at least make sure your dealer gets you a battery and box. Very, very important guys to have a battery. Um, that is actually required in a lot of states because that battery works the breakaway cable on an RV. If it ever fell off your truck, the cable gets yanked out, basically activating the magnets on the brakes to lock them up so it don't free roll down the street. So definitely make sure you have a good battery on the RV. All right, guys, once again, thank you for taking the time to check out my video and check out the RVs. Really do appreciate you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to give the guys at Couches RV Nation a call. They will definitely save you guys a lot of money on the new RV. Thanks again, guys.